Hello, in today's video we're taking a look at the Siemens Manual Machini Plus turning module. We'll cover the remote operator station as well as some of the can cycles wizards that are on the control itself. With the manual turning uh, software package, you have all your normal standard 808D features, but then you also have a, a set of um, conversational wizards that aren't included on the basic. So, for instance, look at turning, all sorts of different cycles, radiuses, um, roughing cycles, drilling, you have drilling concentric holes, tapping, uh, grooving cycles, interior exterior grooving, and then threading. Those are additional to what the 808D basic has. Um, another couple cool features on this. If you want to say manually turn down a, a journal or on a piece of bar, so you just want to take a one inch bar and um, maybe turn it down to a half an inch and you just want to chuck it up. You don't want to write any code. You want to, don't want to go into any conversational uh, programming. You can use the standard hand wheels and what you can do is you can set up optional stops. So in my X direction if I want to you know set my stop you know well, whatever two inches I can set my stop here and then on my hand wheels use it to manually turn and every time I I hit that stop, power is cut. We're at that two inch diameter every time or half inch or whatever you set the stop to. You can do that on both X and Z in the positive and negative directions. Very cool. Um, you can also turn tapers. Same thing, you can give it a taper angle and use one hand wheel, Z, uh, and can, can you know, give it a depth per cut and per pass, all your required feed rates. Uh, constant surfacing applies here as well. And you can take, you know, whatever, 100 thou per pass and just use your Z and it will automatically link the two together. Same thing with radius turning. Super simple to set up cycles on this. Uh, makes, you know, this would be a perfect production, I mean, prototype, onesie twosie type of machine great for a tool room where you're constantly making and modifying you know different parts uh, not saying that you can't do production on it I mean it's definitely set up for it 800 inches a minute rapid speeds uh, and you know unlimited turret chuck combinations you, you can you can definitely make it do what you want to do so when you're turning uh, facing turning diameters you have several different options you can choose your tools here you can also give it a, a feed per revolution or in inches per minute typically on the lathe you know unless you're drilling holes you probably are going to stick to uh, inches per revolution in this case 50 thou it's pretty aggressive whatever uh, and then uh, same thing for your spindle you can give it a SFM or you can give it a constant RPM one of the neat things about this, you have hand wheels, but you can also use a joystick. Uh, if I use the joystick here, you'll notice a message that says, you know, can't continue because the spindle is not on it because I have it set up for inches per revolution. Since the spindle's not moving, then we have uh, no movement. So as soon as I turn the spindle on, you'll not you'll see now that we're uh, machining and we're keeping our uh, proper SFM dependent on obviously diameter of the material and what you set your SFM rates up to. Okay, next I guess we can just go through a few cycles and you'll see how easy it is. Say we want to um, tap a hole. 
So we can go to thread, oh, I'm sorry, drill, select our tapping cycle, and we just have to come up with a, a little bit of information here. It's asking us for our spindle speed that we want to uh, tap at and our max speed um, for G96, cooling on or off. Our start position, it's automatically going to go to center lines uh, of, of the spindle, so there is no X. Um, position. It's automatically going to go to zero on X. Our depth, it's always a positive value. In this case, we'll just do a one inch hole uh, and a 20 pitch um, thread. We also have the option to choose a floating tapping head or rigid tap and this machine's capable of rigid tapping so that's what we're going to do. And we've generated our tapping cycle. So Next thing, if I hit cycle start, it's going to yell at me, spindle's not started, which is fine. Just hit reset. We'll start our spindle. And then hit cycle start. It's going over to zero. Tapping in one inch, reversing. That's it. A couple cool features that I'd like to point out, how easy it is to set up a threading cycle, uh, and this will get us to our next, which is threading repair. But for one, we'll just start with the threading cycle. Again, punch in your spindle information. Uh, so I want to thread it 600 inches a minute. Obviously, that's determined by what you're cutting and what you're cutting with. Uh, our Z position, in this case, zero. You can give it in-feed rates and all sorts of things but for this we'll just keep it short. Uh, our threading length will do a one inch again a positive value. Uh, diameter at the start of the thread is going to be one inch as well. Again a, a 50 thou pitch. Uh, thread depth obviously it depends on whatever you know you're cutting. We'll just use 34 thou in this case. Um, here's where we would set up our roughing passes and our finishing pass of 5 thou. And there's all sorts of other parameters here. You can cut to the, from the chuck, away from the chuck. There's a digression amount where it will slow down the feed as you get, uh, or actually speed the feed rate up, spindle up as you get uh, towards the center line of the part. But this is good for now. Our spindle on and hit our cycle start. And it's taken multiple cuts just for demonstration purposes. Probably wouldn't normally take take this small of a, a cut. That's the end of the cycle. Cut it. You want to stop it. And we'll... Most CNC lathes have some sort of threading cycle built in, but what sets this machine apart, especially in a prototype environment or a job shop, is the ability to pick up those threads. And yeah, you can do it on a standard CNC lathe by fiddling with the offsets and lining up grooves, but you know time is money if you want to make money uh, saving time is key so this this makes it super nice basically you just if you removed your threaded piece from the chalk and found out shoot I didn't go deep enough or whatever the case may be you can put that piece back in and line up your threading tool in that groove you know manually jog your tool tip into that groove hit your thread repair cycle uh, it, it automatically remembers the last operation that you did. So, you know, your pitch, your end of thread, all of that is there. Um, if we all if we need to do is accept angle, click OK, and our threading cycle is ready to go.
Hi, right, thanks for watching the video on the Siemens manual machining plus turning module. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call. You can reach us at 1-800-476-4849 or on the web at www.detroitmtlikemachinetool.com. Thanks and have a great day.